Hey everybody, I hope you're doing all right. Today we are going through every single tool here in ArcSight and just doing a very high level overview and hopefully by the end of this video you'll be able to know what all of these mean and hopefully be able to start drawing some pretty cool creations. So what I'm first gonna do, um, we'll come back to these two at the top here, um, but let's first go through the draw tool. Now, I'm also gonna go break down all of these different modes here. So let's start at the very top, and this is what is called continuous lines. And what that means is we can draw without lifting our finger an entire base of a house at angles. You can have them straight. It will automatically try to snap straight for you. And we can even tap these and then trim them to where we want them to be. And now let's say I didn't want this angle. We can scooch that over by just tapping each line individually, even though we drew it all at once. So um, the thing with continuous line mode, it's great for floor plans, but you can't make curves and arcs. So that's why we'll move down here to continuous line plus arcs. So let's actually scooch over here we can still draw like it we were in in continuous, but now we can add arcs, so I can curve that out. Let's actually trim that too. Uh, we can create circles in arc mode. I actually like uh, continuous line mode first because sometimes if you're in a hurry, let's go up here and you're, you're trying to whip through something, um, if you do that same thing and you're on this mode, you can accidentally make a curve when you didn't want to. So um, continuous line mode lets you be a little sloppy. Um, let's move right, right down here to line and arc. And now this is very similar to the one before, except for it's not continuous. So as you see, uh, you can kind of see the tracing of where my finger was. It's one line at a time. Now you can do an arc, you can do a line, but as you can see, it's not gonna keep drawing as you go. And just to show you again, so this one is gonna keep drawing, whereas this one is just one line at a time. And this one's pretty important if you're trying to be very precise as you go along. And now the final one I'm gonna show you is freehand, and this is great for, usually I use it for annotations, so if I say uh, big, This is the big room, other room. Maybe you have a backyard and it doesn't have to be perfect. You sketch a fence in or something and hey, here's the pool. Um, it could get a little sloppy. Uh, I, I recommend annotation mode if you actually wanted to make it nice. And then you can drag that to where you wanted it, pool pool and house. And we can get more into the, the annotation tool later. And then of course, we have rectangle, which is great for, well, you guessed it, drawing rectangles. Um, and now those are all of the modes. Now let's get into a little bit deeper and let's get into the customization of the mode. So I'm gonna hop back into continuous lines and arcs. And let's say I'm doing a perimeter and to, to show that I want it to be green and I want it to be a little thicker. So I'm gonna raise the, the line right here and we will sketch out this rough floor plan here and now let's say the rooms, just so it looks a little different. You know, this is really where preference comes in and you can really make it your own. Um, we'll make the line rate a little smaller and we're gonna do a dotted line for the interior. Um, I don't know why you necessarily would wanna do this, but certainly, especially if you're on the job using this for work, um, you're gonna wanna differentiate different lines. So it's good to have that as a tool. And the final thing I'll show you under the style menu is if you wanna do arrows. Um, so I moved to dot dash, let's make it purple. And we are drawing a line in here. And maybe that's if you wanna do call outs on your own without using the annotation, annotate tool right here. 
And that does it for drawing. We went through all the modes and hopefully it's a little less intimidating. It really is a lot easier, but I understand that sometimes your first time in here, it could look like a lot, but, it, it, but it, in fact, it's actually even easier for you to do your own thing in here and make it your own. So I'm gonna move along above the draw tool is the select tool. And now it's very easy. There's only two different modes. Um, the first is freehand select. So this is really good for, let's say here, this one right here is a little messy. I just wanted to get rid of these two lines. As you can see, it's really easy. So let's, again, I'm gonna zoom in here. I just wanna swipe the two that I'm deleting down here and delete it. Now that's really important for some precise um, things that you need to often delete or maybe change the style on. So maybe you also wanted to um, make these a little bolder and add those arrows that we looked at in the draw video. So that is exactly why you would use the free hand or the free select. Um, but the much easier, um, let's say if you are changing everything. So for, for instance, I want to delete all this before I show you the wall tool here. So I'm going to select the box select and I'm just going to go ahead and select everything. Um, you know, I guess it's important to show you this is also where you can add measurements um, or add dimensions. We'll add those in there. And then finally, why, why I use it and why you are probably going to use it the most is to delete things and start from scratch. All right. And now we need to reselect our dimensions. There we go. And that covers the select tool, pretty basic. The next tool we're gonna to talk about is the wall tool and one where we get the most questions about. Mostly about why is it different from the draw tool? Because as you can see, we have continuous lines, we have our continuous lines and arcs, and we have our line and arc. And that's exactly the same thing we had in draw. You know, maybe a couple, there's not freehand anymore, but it's very close to what we had in draw. So. What's the difference? And the biggest difference is thickness of the wall. So we can get into our wall properties down here. We're at one foot, let's say two feet for whatever reason, just to keep it simple. And then here we also can adjust our colors again. And let's go ahead and draw out a room using the wall. I'm gonna switch back to our continuous lines because I like to draw it all at once. There we go. And why it gets a little different is, well, first of all, we had that thickness we could adjust to, to be more like a wall. But the biggest difference, in my opinion, is when we do our openings. So just to show you, I'm gonna do a draw and just do a box over here using the draw tool. And then the openings. Let's grab a bay window. I'm going to duplicate it by dragging this. And we're gonna make them a little bit bigger so it makes a little more sense here. All right, now let's, let's actually delete this other baby one. And let's clone this guy. So I'm cloning it, bringing it here, and then we'll grab the original. And when we bring that to a regular line, Notice how one just sits on the line. That's when you use just the draw tool, but when you use the openings tool, and let's grab a door too to demonstrate this a little further. You know all those 14 foot doors that you're used to seeing. See how the openings and the walls play together. So if you're doing a floor plan, I recommend doing it in the wall. And then if you're adding, um, you know, text or um, you're marking it up or you're marking different diagrams or electrical routing or whatever it might be, that's where the draw tool would come in over the wall tool. And then just like the draw tool, we could also highlight this. We can change the wall properties. Let's say, oh, well, we didn't need them two feet. We needed them one foot, just like that. We could easily change that on all of our walls. So that covers both walls and openings. 
And again, Arc Sight's always preloaded with a bunch of standard windows and doors to help you complete your floor plan. Now, again, we have something similar. The same way that wall tool and draw tool um, were kind of close, openings and shapes are also close too. Now, they're both shapes that we drop onto our canvas, but the difference is openings, as we saw in the last video, or last section, um, openings interacts with the wall tool, whereas shapes is a lot like the draw tool where it's its own independent thing that you add onto your drawing. So let's check out some examples of that. So first I'm gonna hop back into my wall tool and just let's draw one room in here and let's say this is our living room. Um, again, I'm gonna show you one more example of openings. So a uh, single door, remember that? We can add that as the door to this room. And again, that engages with our wall tool, not the draw tool. And if we go into shapes, Let's add a sofa to this room. Hide our keyboard. Just make it a little bigger. And you know, I'm probably not gonna be sitting staring at a wall, so let's add a TV. Guess we'll spin that around, make it look a little more realistic. Another thing hidden in the shapes here are uh, stairs. So I will grab a staircase here. Let's just make that a little smaller. We'll rotate it and put that in the back. And let's say that's the stairwell back there. So now we're gonna talk a little bit about how you can do some advanced shapes. Now, what you can do is use the draw tool to create any shape you want. So also, of course, we have some extra shapes that you can download at any time. But if you don't see one that we've already made for you, let's do our own. So let's say for whatever reason you need a fire symbol. Um, let's go ahead and make it red, a little bit thicker here, and let's make that a solid line. So let's go ahead and draw some fire. We'll try to anyways. I think that's close enough. So let's say this is a shape we want. So we're gonna go to select, and we're gonna select this, and it's as easy as one button. You see right here, create shape. And we'll go ahead and say, this is called fire and we'll create this shape. And now when we go into our shapes, we can go to my shapes and look, we have fire there for us. So I can bring this in whenever I need fire. <laughs> of course, this is a pretty goofy example, but I'm sure you can see the type of shapes that you would like to make and how easy it is to add them into your library. So let's move right along here and we have what's called our fill tool. Now we have two ways to fill this. We have uh, a pick interior point where we have a boundary. So what I like to do is the pick internal point. So we could just tap this area we wanted to fill. And as you can see, it's filled right away with a lines. Now, if you didn't want to do the lines, we have a bunch of patterns preloaded. Um, you know, for the sake of this, maybe there's wood. That looks like wood. Let's call that good. So I'm sure you can use this, especially if you're making a way more detailed drawing. And there should be more than enough patterns in here to get you going if you were to do each room. So let me just do that one more time here. We're gonna go to fill. We're gonna go to select internal point. We're gonna tap that, we're gonna say yes. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the other room. Fill, tap the internal room. Uh, but let's say this one we wanted to look a little different. Let's go ahead and make that cement and we are done. So that was the fill tool. Uh, working our way right down here, we have measure. So our first tool will be the distance. So let's say it's, and these are all very easy. So I'm just gonna breeze by it, but let's say we're just doing this wall. Boom, 87 feet, uh, oops. And that is added, and then let's keep going. We'll do this whole wall. 
and that is 190. Um, very simple. Let's go down to angle. Um, I think this would be a good example down here. Oops, I did it again. So that was 90 degrees, 90. Um, this next is area. So this is where we draw over an area. So let's actually use this and let's say we were just checking out these and boom. All right, so moving right along, we have a pick area. Now this one's a little bit simpler because all we have to do is tap and it does it for us very easy. And then finally again is select boundary where we can tap all of the walls and have it filled in. So that's measure for you. The last thing I'll show you here today um, is how to add your measurements along the entire drawing. So let's go ahead and delete these first. We'll use our select tool, select everything, and we're just going to add dimensions. Let's add it on the center and boom. So in case you wanted to have everything measured out without going through and actually measuring it yourself, that's a little bit of a faster way to do it. So that does it for the basic features of ArcSight. I think with all of these tools armed, you should be able to go out and start drawing your very own floor plans. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see ya.